这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西都是这些东西
of all traditions in Victoria. Once again, today, this is a great honor for the Kwame Ming Temple to host His Holiness' return visit, and delighted to have the opportunity to listen to his wisdom, spiritual guidance, and have his blessings to this new grand hall. As the Great Buddha Hall construction began in April 2006 and will be completed in a few months' time, the aim of this building to provide a spiritual center to encourage people to live in peace and harmony and offer to the public a community services center that providing essential cultural, social, and educational services to the community at large. We pay respect and thank His Holiness for the blessing, and also we are blessed for your presence. The blessing ceremony had begun with the feature ceremony uh, chanting in Tibetan and Vietnamese, as you yet witnessed. And now, we haven't got much time. Your Holiness, we are honored, privileged, and thank you for your gracious presence and your blessing. So every year, you receive thousands of invitations to speak from all over the world, and you only satisfy a small number of requests. Therefore, we are fortunate to be among the privileged. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Dear spiritual brothers and sisters, particularly the Vietnamese uh, Sanghas and I think some nuns, some nuns here? Yeah? I think Bhikshuni? I think some Bhikshunis. <laughs> so, I'm extremely happy uh, the second time I visit here with new big temple. <laughs> How much cost? <laughs> 12 million pesos. <laughs> 12 million dollars. <laughs> uh, so, uh, certainly the Buddhism is one of the, I think, ancient important uh, religious tradition. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Buddhism belongs to Asia, India, then eventually Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Laos, uh, and, and then it's China, through China, Venom, Korea, Japan, and then later Tibet, and then Mongolia, and some part of uh, Russian Federation. So these area uh, generally, they say, follow Buddhism. Of course, India the original home of Buddha Dharma, uh, but uh, India, the majority of the people are mainly Hindu and also large number of Muslim and Christians and some other followers. But in any way, uh, now we are in the first century. Or do you need Vietnamese translation or no need? Hmm? After, okay. Hmm. So we are in the first century. The science and technology highly developed. Uh, I think the last 
uh, one or two centuries, I think everybody, all their energy, all their mind focusing about economy development, <laughs> about money. <laughs> now, even now, I think we really reach such an extent in order to require acquire in order to acquire money, all sorts of methods, corruptions, and all sorts of dirty tricks in order to gain some money, isn't it? Uh, I think money really, I believe, spoil our moral principle. I really feel like that. And in the meantime, not only moral principle damage, but also, you see, money uh, develop jealousy, suspicion, uh, and then also frustration. That transform, uh, I say, the anger, violence. So, in any way, uh, one thing very clear: material value alone will not bring inner peace. That is certain. Because money brings facility for our physical comfort, not mind. In a supermarket, if you, if you try to find, uh, to buy peace of mind, impossible. Or most sophisticated sort of factory, if you ask them, oh, please give me one instrument which brings peace of mind. No. Peace of mind must come through within. Because the major sort of also the, uh, disturbances about our inner peace is our emotion. Not external enemy, not external sort of uh, troublemaker, but the real sort of destroyer of our peace of mind is our own destructive emotion. So naturally, logically, uh, the, the real effective method to reduce this destructive emotion is must develop within mind, within emotion themselves, itself. So, now today, I often used to telling people, last few thousand years, I think, uh, for 5,000 years, we developed faith. Uh, and then we, we put all our hope on faith. Whenever we find some difficulties, pray to God or to something, some mysterious thing. <laughs> the, then last two to three, uh, 300 years, Science and technology eventually develop. So science, technology immediately brought what we want. Good health, uh, good facility, and everything become more easier. <laughs> so then uh, people naturally pay more attention about uh, science and technology rather than faith. Then later part of the 20th century, through our own experience, eventually we realize there is limitation about material value. I know some very rich family, uh, I think a billionaire, but as a person, human level, very unhappy person. So there are millions, millions of dollars fail bring inner peace. Very clear. Uh, and then another thing, among the scientists, uh, their knowledge about brain, about sort of what's it, the neurons, these things highly develop. Then they eventually, uh, they also just showing interest about what's emotion, what's mind. 
because medical science now they already notice peace of mind very important factor for good health and also recover from illness or surgery peace of mind relax mind very important uh, for that so therefore now medical science and also the specialist about brain uh, um, some scientist top scientist now really showing interest what's emotion what's relation emotion and brain and now now these days among the science scientists now they found through training of mind because of brain plus sexuality but what would call ka plasticity oh that that one i i don't know is that word <laughs> but is some chemical in brain you see through training of mind actually can change this is first sort of finding first time uh, so that shows you see the through training of mind even physical part can change so therefore i think two factors uh, from the sort of exp experience the limitation or because of the limitation of material value and then other hand scientific sort of research now begin to focusing what's mind how to change our mind how to change our emotion so uh because of these sort of factor there are indications uh particularly among the younger people who begin to develop some interest about inner value and spirituality so that's overall i think the sort of picture of the world in the 21st century uh and then also i think the people everywhere particularly in europe in america i think they're really fed up about violence i think australia comparatively maybe better <laughs> so so when people i think uh, in in 20th century in early part of 20th century when nation declare war on neighbor uh, the whole citizen of the country proudly without the slightest question joining war effort now that kind of situation completely changed later part of 20th century and begin of this 21st century for example when america about to start war on iraq how many people from australia up to united states you see they oppose the violence and one peace so through demonstrations so and also kosovo war i think concerned people concerned nation they really oppose using violence using force so there are i i think real sort of city as the desire uh to to because of that about peace totally sort of with the cause of that fed up violence so therefore now again the question is how to bring peace peace does not mean no longer any problem so long we human being remain on this planet some problem bound to happen because of human vision human greed human desire so therefore uh, problem will be will remain now uh, we we need the realistic method to solve this sort of conflict or disagreement so that's a dialogue now in what i often is telling people 20th century become century of bloodshed 
according to some history, about 200 millions of people killed through violence, through war. So greatest number of killing through war, I think, in 21st, in 20th century. If this immense war, including use nuclear weapon, if really brought some sort of real peace or much sort of the problem reduced, then okay, there could be some kind of legitim kind of the legitimacy. But that's not the case. Only suffering uh, and damage. So therefore, uh, now this 21st century, we should build century of dialogue. Uh, so in order to carry dialogue, we need spirit of respect others' right. Not just think my interest, our interest, and indifferent, indifferent. In, indifferent others of interest. And then how can develop dialogue? So uh, on that respect, I think a genuine spirit of sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, entire nearly seven billion human beings consider as a human brother sisters. We must take care about their interest. With that kind of attitude, then real meaningful dialogue can develop. So in that respect, I think various different institutions have immense sort of city potential. Uh, uh, to, 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 to bring genuine sense of brotherhood, sisterhood. So, uh, so all major institutions have the same, what's the potential. Different philosophy. Uh, the theistic religion, their main sort of faith is God, creator. The non theistic religion, such as, Zen, such as Jainism and Buddhism and some other ancient Indian tradition, no concept of God, no creator, but ourselves as a creator. So philosophical field, big differences. Uh, so I think from the, uh, Christ, the theistic religious viewpoint, we Buddhists are non-believers. <laughs> oh? Oh? What's Kaza? Translation. I mean, too long. Too long. Oh. Kaza. Kaza. Then, okay, I, I will translate. Then, okay. So, Thank so all, all religions, you see, in spite of different philosophy, but all carry same teaching, practice teaching of love, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, self-discipline, all these same practice, same sort of message. So uh, uh, all major institutions have same potential to help humanity. Um, chúng tôi xin um, chỉ um, uh, tạm uh, dịch cho tất cả quý vị nghe ha. Trước rằng Lai Lama đã chào mừng đến Quang Minh thăm, thăm đến chùa Quang Minh và rất là vui mừng được trở lại lần thứ hai. Thì ngài đã nói về Phật giáo nguyên thủy từ Ấn Độ đã, đã lan truyền từ các nước Á Châu như Miến Điện, Thái Lan, Trung Quốc, Nhật Bản, Việt Nam và bây giờ gần như là hiện diện trên toàn thế giới. Và bây giờ trong thiên niên, niên kỷ mới, khoa học điện tử càng ngày càng tiến bộ và từ đó vấn đề tiền bạc vật chất trở thành một cái nhu cầu thiết yếu và đó là một cái điểm mà làm cho con người của chúng ta cấu xé lẫn nhau ganh ghét tham nhũng và tạo cái điều bất chính những như chính chúng ta đã thấy như ngài vừa mới uh, trình bày như chúng ta đi siêu thị chúng ta mua hàng hóa nhưng mà chúng ta không mua được cái tâm an lạc tại vì tâm an lạc không mua được không ai bán cho chúng ta tâm an lạc phải được chúng ta hung dưỡng và ngày hôm nay ngài cũng muốn nhắc nhở lại cho chúng ta những cái gì mà chúng ta đã đánh mất từ mấy năm qua về những cái tiến bộ của khoa học kỹ thuật bởi vì ngày nay khoa học kỹ thuật càng tiến bộ thì gia đình càng sống không hạnh phúc 
những cái gia đình triệu phú tỷ phú tuy rằng là họ rất là nhiều tiền lắm bạc nhưng mà vẫn không có hạnh phúc và tâm không có an lạc cho nên ngày hôm nay ngài muốn nhắc nhở là chúng ta về cái sự huấn dưỡng của tâm an lạc ngài giải thích về cái sự quân bình trong đầu óc của con người của chúng ta sự bình quân trong đầu óc sẽ đem lại cho chúng ta sự an lạc và đó cũng là một cái kết quả của những nhà nghiên cứu gia ngài còn nhắc nhở đến cho chúng ta trong những cuộc sống từ chiến tranh từ những thiên tai đã vượt qua hòa bình an lạc là những điều mà chúng ta cần phải vươn đến như lịch sử đã cho chúng ta thấy hàng triệu người chết vì chiến tranh thiên tai cho nên bước vào cái niên kỷ mới an lạc cần phải được huấn dưỡng nhiều hơn nữa và tôn giáo là một cái vấn đề cần phải được kiên trì Thank you, His Holiness. You can continue. Thank you. So now, mm. Mm. so still continue. Oh, please, please sit there, sit there, and make note. Sit, sit, sit there. <laughs> so now, about Buddhism. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's, that's good, very good. Uh, so Buddhism, uh, nowadays, I think, as I mentioned earlier, Buddhism also, they uh, carry those sort of practice, uh, love, compassion, forgiveness, these things, as like any other major tradition. Uh, then the philosophical aspect, uh, it's rather sort of very sophisticated. So ancient time in India, uh, like Nalanda, Nalanda sort of monastic institution, university, Nalanda University. I think not only just a religious sort of center, but academic center. And many of those Nalanda masters I usually describe professors of Nalanda. <laughs> so these masters, professors of Nalanda, they are writing actually academic subject. Uh, they carry investigation. What's the reality? What's the nature? Nature of matters, nature of mind. So that part I consider science, not religion, but science. Uh, so now, uh, last third, now okay now, the last several years, I had sort of serious sort of engagement with modern scientists. Uh, re further research about mind, about emotion how to tackle these emotions. No. So now scientists, now for example, in America, Wisconsin University, uh, Emory University, and Stanford University, and a few more universities, they actually carrying research work about mind, uh, according to Buddhist explanation about mind. Uh, so they found very useful information from ancient Indian sort of treasure, not only Buddhism, but also Hinduism. Uh, so therefore, uh, the, some people who usually remain distant from any religion but in their eye, now Buddhism is something exceptional because they not necessarily sort of attraction to us is a Buddhist concept about next life or these things, but simply Buddhist science about mind, about emotion. Uh, so it is quite clear, uh, according last 30 years, my experience, now it quite clear the Buddhist science certainly can make significant contribution in modern science regarding emotional mind, these things. 
So now Vietnamese. Uh, traditionally Buddhist country. And within Buddhist tradition, Pali tradition, Sanskrit tradition, two traditions, we both follow of Sanskrit tradition. We all follow of uh, Nalanda institution, Nalanda scholars, like Lunsu Pusa, Lunsu Pusa, you know, Nagarjuna, Lunsu Pusa, uh, Ari Asanga, uh, all these uh, Nalanda masters, Nalanda professors. You see, we both follow their teaching like that. Uh, and and another aspect, you Vietnamese also par passing through difficult period. We too. <laughs> In that sense, we are truly brothers, sisters. <laughs> but time change, uh, time change, I noticed is a qu quite a number of Vietnamese from Vietnam itself now coming to India. Uh, and receiving some sort of teaching like that. So it seems some now change, and including some member of communist, Vietnamese Communist Party leaders or family, family member, some coming there. So things are changing. So in any way, those Vietnamese who live in free countries like France, in America, and also Australia, Wherever you live, you carry your tradition, uh, your I say, the spirituality. So therefore, uh, in Australia, basically a non-Buddhist country, uh, Judo-Christian background sort of tradition, but you find a place to, <laughs> to establish your own temple <laughs> in order to keep your own Buddhist spirituality. So I very much appreciate. Now your turn. <laughs> translate, translate. Kính thưa quý vị, um, ngài đã nhắc đến những cái học giả của các trường đại học uh, và những cái nghiên cứu của các nhà học giả uh, trên thế giới đã cho biết rằng là uh, cái sự an lạc. Um, rất là um, đã được uh, thực hiện và đã được nghiên cứu và đã được chứng minh cho thấy rằng là khoa học y tế và đạo Phật của chúng ta đã gắn liền với nhau rất là nhiều um, Ngài đã nhắc nhở đến trong những năm gần đây những cái nghiên cứu về um, ẩn uh, giáo uh, giáo xúc cảm của con người đã được thực hiện và những cái kết quả mà của những nhà nghiên cứu uh, đưa ra đều có những cái liên hệ mật thiết đến Phật giáo của chúng ta nhất là hướng dẫn về cho tâm an lạc và tâm quân bình thì một điều mà chắc chắn ngài thấy rằng ngoài cho chúng ta biết rằng là khoa học và Phật giáo đã gắn liền với nhau và có những kết quả rất là nhiều giống nhau à, những cái nghiên cứu những cái những nhà nghiên cứu đã dùng những lời thuyết giảng của Đức Phật để mà đưa vào những cái kết luận của mình thành ra cho đó ngài có thể hướng dẫn cho chúng ta thấy rằng là tâm an lạc trong cuộc sống của chúng ta là cái điều thiết yếu và vừa rồi ngài cũng rất là vui mừng và đã cảm kích đối với cộng đồng phật tử việt nam của chúng ta ở việt nam cũng như là trên toàn khắp nơi tại úc tại pháp tại các nơi đã thành công rất là mỹ mãn và ngài thấy đó là rất là vui mừng và ngài chúc mừng đến tất cả các chúng ta đã ổn định cuộc sống và đã tu tập nương noi theo gương của đức phật từ bi <cười> on minor differences. Vietnamese, very hot country, but you wear sleeves, sorry. <laughs> sleeves. We, very cold country, Tibet, but without that sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, uh, now, whenever I met some Buddhist, met a Chinese Buddhist, uh, Japanese Buddhist, uh, Korean, Vietnamese, uh, uh, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Burma, and Tibetan, Mongolian. I always uh, stress 
that we Buddhist now should be 21st century Buddhist. That means the Buddhist with full of knowledge about Buddha Dharma. That is very essential. Traditionally, we simply, you see, uh, claim oneself as a Buddhist, but actually not knowing what is Buddhism. I often so teasing our Chinese Buddhist. It is not so sort of, not sufficient. Just say Amitov, Amitov. <laughs> and Tibetan, say I usually see teasing them, uh, recite the one famous mantra, mantra of Kuan Yin. Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum. So that, if when you a little bit hurry, then Om Mani, Om Mani, Mani. That sounds, that, that sounds, looks like money, 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 that. <laughs> so therefore, you see, without knowing, what's the meaning? And quite often, when I met some, you see, Indian Buddhist or Tibetan Buddhist, uh, when he, student, when I ask them, uh, oh, what is your religion? They say Buddhism. Buddhist. Then I ask, what's Buddha? No answer. Do not know. <laughs> Buddha considered just one historical figure. Figure. But that's not sufficient. We must know what's real Buddhism. And also Christian. You see, you should know the real teaching of Jesus Christ. Just as a claim as a Christian and do that is not sufficient. No. So, uh, since Buddha Dharma, as I mentioned earlier, sort of quite sort of sophisticated philosophy, we must study these things. Uh, so, first, Buddhist science. On the basis of Buddhist science, then Buddhist philosophy developed. Like do truth, a subtle way of impermanence and interdependency. These philosophical view develop on the basis of new basis of the reality. That's Buddhist science. Then uh, uh, there is possibility to change our mind. There is possibility to reduce destructive emotion. And finally, there is possibility to eliminate completely about destructive emotion. That is nirvana, moksha, salvation. So on the basis of science, uh, the Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist concept develop. Then according to Buddhist concept, then practice start. So genuine Buddhist should know Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist science. Uh, otherwise, you see, the, the practice for one's practice for one's religion, one's own religion, just like fashion, just like sort of habit, not much meaning. So therefore, the uh, please, my Buddhist so the Buddhist brothers sisters, please study more and visit temple and in front of Buddha and recite some. Uh, sort of uh, prayer is not sufficient. We must study what's, what's real Buddhist teaching. Uh, and the essential, or the essence of Buddha's teaching really elaborated by, elaborated by like Nagarjuna, Arya Asanga, Basuband, all these uh, great Nalanda master, they really explain thoroughly and if possible the Buddhist epistemology 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 Buddhist logic uh, the, again Nalanda master Digna uh, Dharma Kitti uh, Shandarakshita Kamala Shila uh, in Tibetan these texts about Buddhist 
epistemology available. I was told in Chinese language, not available, not translated. Some portion, otherwise not, not translated. Now, uh, already this is some work, some project, translation. Already we started. So eventually, these sort of Buddhist epistemologies or text will be available in Chinese language. And then eventually, it is very easy to translate Vietnamese and Korean and Japanese. Clear. So, please pay more attention for study. Study. Then the faith, uh, faith based on fuller knowledge about Buddhism. That faith is much sounder. That's important. Thank you. So, that's all. So, so, so I hope, I hope, you see, they later, this hall, not only prayer hall, but classroom, class for study, I hope. So maybe next time coming here, uh, uh, I, I also, you see, uh, Kasuta, uh, participate in your class. Thank you. <laughs> Kính thưa quý vị, Đức Đạt Lai Lama đã nhắc nhở đến chúng ta phải huấn dưỡng tâm đại bi, phát triển đại xã và nhận diện cái đau khổ để dẹp bỏ những cái phiền não à, vọng tâm của mình. À, hành giả khi mà tu tập đó, không chỉ tu thiền mà phải cần phải dẹp bỏ những cái vọng não để mà cho trí tuệ của chúng ta được phát triển. Và Ngài cũng nhắc đến cái tôi của chúng của mình, à, tại vì cái tôi nó không nằm ngoài cái ẩn tức là cái hợp thể của thân và tâm. Thì ẩn thì vô thường, còn cái tôi thì được xem là giống như độc nhất vô thường thành ra Ngài. Lưu ý chúng ta cần nên kiên trì và cần nên nhớ là trở về chính tâm để những cái hình tướng tư vọng của sắc, của màu của chúng ta à, được an lành. Và khi mà chúng ta tâm chứng thì chúng ta mới thoát ra được khỏi những cái ràng buộc của cõi thường. Và Ngài một lần nữa nhắc nhở chúng ta nên cố gắng kiên trì à, tu luyện. Thì đó là cái vấn đề mà cái ngày bữa nay những cái bài giảng của Ngài. Your Holiness, uh, thank you very much for a wonderful, warm and compassionate speech. It means so much for too many of us here today. Uh, your teaching has touched uh, many human hearts and we will continue practice the loving compassion, think of others, help them as much as we can and resolve happiness. Uh, we pray for your healthy life, your safety and wish you enjoy this present moment with us. Thank you. Thank you. Now please stand for the departure of the His Holiness the Dalai Lama.
I'm not a man of my word.